a bad guy is silently sneaking up to the hero of the movie. He's skilled, patient, completely silently tiptoeing forward, bit by bit. He's pressing a piece of cloth to the opening of a glass bottle. Then with one swift motion, he jumps behind our hero, grabs him violently and presses the cloth on his mouth and nose. The hero's eyes widen, he squirms, he's trying to escape. His legs are twitching as the cloth is being held tightly against his face. Seconds later, the good guy is unconscious. The substance pressed against our hero's face is obviously chloroform. But does chloroform actually work like that? Or let's start at the beginning. What even is this chloroform stuff? Let's look into the science Hollywood is disregarding here. Chloroform is nowadays used in building, paper and board industries, and in pesticide, and obviously, since that's how most of us know it, in Hollywood. The total global flux of chloroform through the environment is approximately 660,000 tons per year, and about 90% of emissions are natural in origin. Quite a few kinds of seaweed, as well as probably a few fungi species, produce chloroform. Now, obviously, most of us know chloroform as this magic ingredient that movie villains use to instantly knock out their victim. And there's a bit of truth in that, but of course, it's never as dramatic as in the pictures. Chloroform is not an efficient sedative, and its efficiency depends on factors like body weight, air circulation, and the strength of the solution. Small amounts of chloroform can induce lethargy and disorientation. Increased exposure leads to unconsciousness and an inability to feel pain. These are cool and sometimes useful parts, as we'll see in a moment. But prolonged exposure can cause difficulty in breathing, then paralysis, followed by death. From the moment of unconsciousness, there is generally a 10 to 15 minute window where a patient is asleep and once they start regaining consciousness, there will be a disorientation that can last up to 30 minutes and a severe headache lasting hours. Now, the useful part of it all, the induced unconsciousness and the not feeling pain part are great and needed in medicine, so it's no wonder chloroform was used on patients as an anesthetic. But it is difficult to determine the right dosage that would render a person unconscious without impairing other vital nerve functions. It is a powerful anesthetic used in surgeries from the 19th century. In November of 1847, Simpson first discovered the anesthetic qualities of chloroform on humans and it was widely used as an anesthetic for quite a while. This was of course a great advance in medicine, but soon problems surfaced. Following chloroform-induced anesthesia, some patients suffered nausea, vomiting, hyperthermia, and coma due to hepatic dysfunction. At autopsy, liver necrosis and degeneration have been observed. It took until 1911 to prove in experiments with animals that chloroform can cause cardiac fibrillation, respiratory failure, and cancer. It was quickly abandoned in favor of ether upon discovery of its toxicity. Now, that's all good and such, but how did Hollywood come up with the use as a knockout drug that has to be used in every other movie. And how are they misinformed, or at least misinforming their viewers on the effect that chloroform has on a person? Well, it's not all wrong. Chloroform works by inhalation as well, and it's not a crazy idea. This property has actually been used by criminals in order to subdue or even kill their victims. For example, serial killer Dr. Henry Howard Holmes used chloroform overdoses to kill dozens of women. And there are many cases like that when chloroform was used to commit crimes because in the beginning of the 20th century, it was still widely used as an anesthetic, which made it easier for criminals to acquire some of it. And even so, chloroform was rarely used alone. Usually it was matched with other drugs or alcohol. In many cases, victims agreed to the chloroform as a recreational drug or were tricked into taking it orally. It is easy to overdose on chloroform, but some people die from simply swallowing their tongues and suffocating. Now, Hollywood creators were quick to start this era of dumb cloths over people's faces, but of course, chloroform simply doesn't work like that. It is not pressed up against your mouth and nose and renders you unconscious immediately. And no, it also does not just take a few seconds. It takes about five minutes to induce anesthesia with chloroform, and that is under conditions with a willing or a restrained patient. And even with a fully soaked rag, you're going to have to hold your victim still implying a 
higher physical strength and believe me, even if you are stronger, it is really hard to keep another person perfectly still and always cover their mouth and nose for over five minutes. Okay, let's assume that worked and the victim is knocked out. How long does the effect last? Are you, as a criminal, gonna be able to move them around and secure them? Are you gonna have the time to bring your victim to the room where your chair is so you can spin around dramatically as soon as they wake up? Well, no. Chloroform knocks you out for as long as it's applied. This could be for 20 minutes or 2 hours with a 20 to 30 minute recovery time during which will be an intense shivering, severe nausea and more than likely vomiting and an hour long lasting headache. So not really useful because you have to keep applying it and then they will be too sick to answer any of the questions or cleverly escape and then gift the viewer with the most well choreographed fight scene ever. So it's really not like we see it in the movies. What would be more realistic? Well, choking works pretty fast and then for them to stay that way, the villain has to inject them with some ketamine, which makes the victim unconscious for a few minutes longer. Just saying, you don't need to sell lies, Hollywood. Not if there are some more accurate alternatives. But fine, I don't want to be petty, I'll keep believing in a magical movie chloroform form so that it's not losing its credibility, okay? 